Coming out to you from the KMSU TV studios, streaming live on your wonderfully gifted devices, MSU Inside Out, Episode 5. And we are back for another week. Uh, Caden is still out, well, so we have Phil with back with us again and Phil uh, how do you feel now that uh, second week for you now uh, co-hosting you know it was fun last week we had we had a couple of technical difficulties but it, it's cool to just be back here you know we, we miss having Kate on the show he brings a lot of energy but I, I'm looking forward to filling in for him we're gonna, we're gonna have a great show we're gonna get a lot of insight on uh, Minot State Athletics here including the Minot State wrestling team with that being said the Minot wrestling team made its return to the mats this week after a long hiatus due to the COVID-19 with more on the story Noe Garcia is standing by Minot State wrestling team makes their return to the mat for the first time since the last semester Marco Ramirez Lazos a veteran for the Minot State wrestling team is here to tell us a little bit more about their return to practice How's it going, Marco? Pretty good. How are you? I'm great. So how does it feel to finally be back on the mat after such a long time? Uh, it's been wonderful. I'm, I'm glad we got an opportunity to actually get on the mat this semester before we start competing next, uh, or next uh, spring semester. So it's been mm -hmm. just a blessing. I mean, everyone's been patient on the team, and I'm just glad to even have the chance to get back on the mat. Awesome. So like being back on the mat, is there a bit of... Uh, mat rust or has it been like not missing the stuff? How's it been for you? For myself, I feel like there's a it feels like I haven't, I haven't skipped a beat but I feel like there's a bit of a some mat rust there mm -hmm. you know, getting back into the flow of everything. Uh, I myself haven't been on the mat in seven months or so since I tore my MCL in uh, February mm -hmm. and then due to COVID during the summer the room hasn't been open everything else is shut down so Gotcha so being that said, how is the rest of the team looking and uh, what are your expectations for the team coming this next spring? So the way our practice is laid out right now, we're only allowed to have a certain amount of wrestlers during the room. Okay. And we have about six at my 6 a.m. session, but f we have a lot of good guys in there. Oscar Nellis, Logan Fisher, my partner, Kelby Armstrong, all looking really strong. Guys are coming in uh, during team... Uh, team of runs and everything looking mm -hmm. really good they're in shape so that's really helpful that's a good start we don't have to worry about that going into season and uh team expectations i mean we're shooting for the sky here we got a top three nsic hopefully we have the nsic tournament the region tournament if if not i mean no big deal but we're looking forward to competing again awesome yeah i'm definitely excited to see you guys get back on the mat but uh not only are you a Minot State uh, wrestler here, but you're also a Marine. Can you go ahead and tell us a little bit how that works with your wrestling schedule and everything and how you manage being a Mi uh, Minot State Beaver and a Marine at the same time? Yeah, so the Marine, uh, it's the U.S. Marine Corps officer program, and it's, uh, they kind of, you, you join in and you, you got to get selected across this board and everything's really highly competitive. So I luckily got selected this past December then I went to Officer Candidate School in Quantico, Virginia this past summer. And uh, they just take you through like uh, almost boot camp style, but mo more focused on leadership and um, leading and getting and leading other Marines. So that's been really, it was a really fun experience. And I, I returned back there next summer again, summer 22 or 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it's, it's like uh, going through school and wrestling, you know, I mean, you got to manage your load, you got to know how to use your time and there's not, not, not much else to it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Marco. I think that's all we're going to have time for today. Um, I'm looking forward to see you back on the mat in January competing with the rest of the Minot State Beavers wrestling team. And um, yeah, that's all I got for you. Uh, back to the studio. They became ACHA Division I national champions in 2019, and after completing the regular season but unable to compete in the national tournament due to the COVID cancellation, you can still call them defending champions. As we speak right now, Minot State men's hockey is getting ready for a new season. In fact, they're already playing. Uh, and joining us on the set is head coach Wade Regeer. Thank you, Wade, for making some time today uh, to join the show. What's the environment like right now? How are the boys feeling? Oh, very excited, very fortunate uh, to say the least. You know, we're one of only 12 schools at our level of 72 teams that are able to actually play 
play this fall. So kind of one of those things where it's an opportunity and, and uh, kind of feel honored and humbled to be able to take advantage of it. But uh, very hungry group. We delayed the season just because our nationals got pushed back to the end of April and I think are just hungry to play games and more or less be just fortunate that we are able to play games. Mm -hmm. It seems like after MSU Athletics and the NSIC were called off until the new year, uh, did that kind of spark anything in particular for you guys? Uh, what do you think was the thought process for the ACHA? You know what, they just kind of, uh, you know, kind of decided that it, every institution, everybody's different depending on where they are regionally and, and where they are locally in terms of their scheduling. And, you know, a lot of the ACHA felt like, you know what, why are we to be the governing body to put too much authority on teams? Let's let each institution, everybody's medical uh, staff make those decisions. And we're fortunate that we are, especially in our region, having so many teams uh, like Jamestown, New Mary, Williston, Botno, uh, Midland, some of these teams in our area that are able to play because it certainly could be worse if you were in other states where things have been locked down so hard that the rinks haven't even been put on. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, like, again, we're, we're so glad that we are institution minus state and Dr. Shirley have been able to give our blessing and, you know, we're going to hopefully take full advantage of it. Yeah, very fortunate where we are where we at right now. Uh, despite the COVID numbers, very fortunate to get some hockey. And uh, moving on to the team, uh, you're from Canada, and there's still a lot of recruiting uh, for you guys from that area. Refreshing the roster every year, getting new players at forward defense, and even a few extra goalies on hand that are transfers. Uh, give us an outlook of the team currently. You know, we're, we're constructed to win right now. You know, we don't want to sound uh, cocky or conceited or anything like that. I just feel like we're a program that has built ourselves as a culture to win now. It's always about winning now. And we kind of make ourselves like the Duke basketball or, you know, or Alabama football that, you know, that it's a championship or bust and that's who we are. But our roster, you know, we had didn't have a whole lot of turnover. We had five guys that actually left the program. We got our captain back for a fifth season. Um, a couple changes, adding some new defensemen. And, and, and the biggest question mark was always going to be goaltender. I mean, Holden Kurtz and Josh Baikowski were two elite goaltenders that, that graduated this past year. So we've got three new guys um, that are just, they're great players, lots of talent. They're going to give us, uh, you know, a new change of pace to what we normally had. Normally you have six foot five goaltenders and now they're all about, feels like they're five foot five. But, uh, but no, they're a roster built to win now. And, you know, we're fortunate enough how close we are to the Canadian border. Most of our guys are actually closer, uh, live closer to Minot than they do Fargo. So um, even though they live across the country, you know, the distance is certainly a, a, an easy in proximity and you know in North Dakota our winters are the same you can't tell the difference within the, the weather how it goes but no nope, we're our rosters to win now and you know what Cole we're excited to to try to win another national championship yeah always exciting for a competitive team like you guys to get some new players in there and uh, um, like you said competitive good again this year uh, what would uh, your expectations be for this season you know what is to take it day by day take it game by game um, but we want to win every game we're in we feel like we're confident enough that regardless of the roster that we're in that we want to win every night um, and I think for our guys you know what expectation is a championship or bust and we're gonna thrive and that's gonna be our goal uh, right to the end of April uh, give us your take on the Wyatt Wasslinchuk situation, moving now to a full-time assistant coach position with the Toros. Uh, how much will you guys miss him given he's still in town and just working with a different team? It'll certainly be tough. You know what, just that dynamic of having him with our roster on a game-to-day -day basis. But we have a great relationship with the Minotauros and sharing the facility. And you know what, even though he's going to be more on their side, he's going to be a big part of us, at least in the practicing stages. And you know what, he's a, he's a godsend for our goaltenders, and you know what, that's going to be a big part of it uh, going forward for sure. Uh, one last question. Home opener Saturday versus Jamestown. How much more exciting is it getting for you guys? Oh, finally excited. You know what, even though we have a number of restrictions, we're only allowed 200 uh, uh, fans there, including only 60 students, which is different from our thousand a night and having two to 300 students. So there's going to be a dynamic, but you know what, we're just excited to be back in the Pepsi rink, back in our familiarity with the locker room and more importantly, excited to beat our arch rival, uh, Jamestown, which is one of the fiercest rivalries in the country. And you know what? We're excited to finally play someone really important. Most certainly. Well, Wade, thank you for being on the show today. Uh, we've heard a lot of good info on the team, and I'm sure all of us, uh, despite the regulations, we're looking forward to the new season, and uh, we'll be paying attention greatly. So thank you, Wade. Thanks, Cole. That was head coach Wade Regeer of MSU Men's Hockey coming on to talk about the new hockey season. When we come back, we will have Emily with news and a lot more with Troy with weather and Philip with his interview. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Thank you to all of our underwriters. 
Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's music mix. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions, no job is too big or too small, located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. Minot Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Welcome back from Underwriters, and a big thank you to all of those who go out of their way to support the MSU Broadcasting each and every day. Yeah, thank you very much for all you do to help to make this show possible. Emily has a bunch of news on the upcoming renovations to the amphitheater just behind the dome. Emily, what do you got for us? I have a question for you guys. What would you do if you were given $1.9 million? Uh, I mean, me personally, I like that new Ford Bronco, so I think I'm putting a down payment and getting me that yes, new Ford I've Bronco. Seen it. I would probably be irresponsible with my money, uh, although it would be cool to pay off some college debt or even own a stake in a professional sports team for sure. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the basic answer and I would say traveling, probably. So the Minot State Amphitheater was built in 1970, meaning it is about 50 years old, offering performances done by young performers to live improv with audience members. The summer theater is typically a fun-filled environment. MSU has officially begun phase one of their summer theater project. The cost of this project is $1.9 million and has an expected end date of May of 2022. Phase one is set to begin on May 25th, and the focus for the upgrades is to increase space for aisles and handrails as well as an additional 20 seats. As the pro project moves along, phase two will then begin around August of 2021. And next May, be sure to check out the MSU Summer Theater. When school began this fall, we reached a point where the COVID cases at MSU were declining or staying stagnant. Since then, a lot has happened. We had our first snowfall of the year, and the weather is reaching those lower temperatures, meaning that activities are being moved inside and our immune systems might be a little weaker. There are 30 active cases and 239 recovered cases. 77 individuals are currently being monitored, and Minot State is at a risk level of three out of five. There is testing Friday from 9 to 11. Remember to pre-register before arriving. For any questions about positive and close contact cases, email Deb Hammond or Kevin Harmon. Stay safe by washing your hands and social distancing. Halloween is right around the corner. Some of us refer to this time of the year as spooky season. MSU Life hosts free events around campus, and all you need to attend is a current MSU student ID. 
Uh, there will be a, a drive-in movie in the East Dome parking lot this Sunday evening from 9 to 11. The featured movie is Hocus Pocus. I can't think of a better way to put everyone in the Halloween spirit. There will be a large outdoor screen and students will sit in their cars and use their radios to hear the audio for the movie. Events are subject to change, so stay tuned to MSU Life's Facebook and Instagram for the latest updates. As Oh my gosh. As I mentioned earlier, we did receive the first snowfall of the year earlier this week. This is just beginning. The snow isn't going anywhere, as all of us know. Minot State Athletics is looking for individuals to help with snow removal around the MSU Dome. For $20 an hour, faculty, staff, and the local student body are welcome to apply for the position. If interested, please contact Sean Griffin by email. Philip, you said that you are going to be doing this job. Yeah, Sean uh, reached out to me early last week to see if I was interested, and I figured it's a, it's a good way to make some extra money in the winter and have a little fun shoveling some snow, maybe get out the snowblower, have a good time. Yeah, and it's certainly uh, time to start shoveling, you know, clear out that snow. You don't want that... Uh, to be slipping on ice or anything but uh yeah just like emily said troy has the weather for us this week and troy uh how's the snow looking out there uh it looks cold actually <laughs> um, so we're gonna start out east here um in grand forks is 34 and 32 down in fargo across the state right now mine up 30 kind of in the middle of the pack bismarck 31 26 in wilston and in 28 in dickinson as we head to our seven day forecast here in the city of magic why not friday tomorrow will be 27 and 12 is your low, 24 is your high on Saturday, and 16 is the low, it's cloudy. 26 Sunday, 10 is the low. And as we move ahead to the start of the new week, Monday will be 28 with a high, with a low of 18, sorry. 35 is a high Tuesday, 29 is a low, 40 Wednesday top in the week with a low of 24, and 39 next Thursday when maybe Roxanne's back. Um, I don't know if I want to do this again. But as we move ahead to um, the travel stuff, we got Beaver football Saturday. Kind of excited. I'm excited. Go red team. Uh, sorry, Philip. As you take a look, Friday will be 27, 12 is a low, and obviously Saturday's game day 24. It's going to be a little cold inside that bubble. If you plan on coming, dress warm and wear a mask. 16 is a low that day, and 26 on Sunday. As we take a look at Noe's hometown, Noe's from Gilbert, California. Kind of jealous there. 72 right now. Sunny. The highest 74 today. The lowest 47. Check back next week for someone else's hometown. I'm Troy Cowell, and this has been the weather. Philip, Caden. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely getting cold out there, so make sure to stay warm. And if you do choose to come to the Beaver football game, make sure you're wearing a mask. With that being said, we're going to go down to our next underwriters break. Make sure to stick around when we get back. I'll be interviewing Greg Spencer of the video production team here at Minot State, as well as we'll see if Troy's picks are getting any better for sports.
He recently posted a video on his Twitter of all the cool shots he's gotten with his drone flying over Minot. Unfortunately, he also flew that do drone into the side of the MSU dome. Joining me now is MSU Athletics Assistant to Video Production, Gregory Spencer. Thank you for being here. What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing good until you insulted me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had to, it was, it's a cool, you got some cool shots with the drone. But, yeah, you know, yeah it, was, it was pretty dope until that happened. So you, you came here to uh, Minot to do video. What got you into videography with athletics? Well, first, I came here my first year to do sports information stuff. So I was doing like stats, uh, writing articles. Wasn't that really good at it. But um, I did a little bit of video for Georgia Southern where I graduated from. Uh, so I wanted to get uh, into that again. I always help out Trey Morton and Sean Arbo with the media day for them last year. So I said, let me just get into it. I'm in mean, my last year and Minot gave me the opportunity to do it. And I'm um, just having a great time doing it now, just getting better and better every day. When you're shooting sports, what, what do you look for when you're filming? What's, what's that go-to shot you're going for? Uh, well, in the beginning, I was just shooting just to be shooting. Um, of course, you're always looking for that big play. Uh, what I have learned is um, every shot doesn't have to be the, the best shot, but every shot can turn to something beautiful throughout the end. So any shot's a good shot. It's just how you uh, work it at the end. What kind of equipment are you using throughout all this videography? Um, so I have two cameras. I have a Sony a6300 and a Sony a7 III. And then I, I did have a drone. Um, so, but that's coming in mail. Shout out to Good Insurance. Uh, I also have a gimbal. It's, it's like a stabilizer to help give me steady shots. And of course, batteries because you need that to. Yeah, I mean, so obviously, operate. you got you to gotta keep all the equipment working. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, because of the coronavirus, you can't really shoot any true MSU athletics obviously, besides practices. So what have you been shooting outside of MSU sports? So outside of MSU sports, I've done a lot of Bishop Ryan football. Uh, the Roger, the athletic director, has definitely given me uh, the green light to shoot with him any time. He also lets me travel with him. I shot some net rolls volleyball games. Um, Things, yeah, I, I just haven't been able to get back to it, so I feel bad. I need to really contact them and get back to them with that. But I've been really focused on Bishop Ryan football, and uh, they're actually doing pretty good this year, and they have actually a, a state tournament game uh, this upcoming Saturday. Nice. Where, where do you see this videography opportunity taking you down the road? So what I want to do, uh, I want to work for a collegiate team. Uh, Division one, Division two, doesn't really matter. Uh, specific sports-wise, of course, I would love to do football and basketball, but any sports is awesome. Um, I would love to, professional is okay. I would rather do collegiate because I can switch from one sport to another sport. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe if I just do one sport, it'll get really boring, except if we're, except if it's the Falcons, uh, cause that's my team or the Braves, but you know, they lost. So it is what it is and they'll be back next year. Yeah, yeah we, we hope so. So is there a sport that you think you're the best at filming or you prefer to film? With this being my first year, I guess I'm more comfortable with I've done more football than anything, uh, just because of a lot of Bishop Ryan. Um, I know basketball like the back of my hand because I played it so much. Uh, so football and basketball for sure. Um, I'm really interested into baseball though. Baseball players are like really cool. They're really interactive throughout. Like of course football is too, but baseball players just has that other kind of personality mm -hmm. that just is easy to uh, incorporate them in videos because they're so they they're pointing at the camera, they're dancing and singing, mm -hmm. just doing crazy stuff. Do you have a favorite thing you've shot so far here at Minot State? Um, actually, I do. Uh, I have the football's media day uh, video is coming out tomorrow. That's probably, I believe that's probably will be my best work so far. Mm -hmm. uh, that and then like all the other media days. Like I love women's hockey's media day. Mm -hmm. They were amazing. That was my first time being on ice. I didn't fall, so I'm 1-0 right now against the ice. Uh, and yeah, I, between football's media day and women's hockey media day, those have definitely been like up there for me, for sure. Will you be shooting the football scrimmage this Saturday? I have to, but I, I want to, but I have to as well. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, again, this is Gregory Spencer, a video production with MSU Athletics. Make sure to check out that awesome football media day video he mentioned is coming out tomorrow. Check it out on his Twitter, and I'm sure MSU Athletics will post as well. Now we're going to go see how Troy's picks are doing, as well as, Troy, you are 0-5 in fantasy as of last week. Uh, has, has that changed? Uh, yeah, I'm 0-6. <laughs> so, yeah, one more loss. Um, not good. Uh, but, hey, we're going to keep rolling with it. So. Hello, Beaver fans. I'm Troy Callum, and this is the Sports Breakdown. Kicking off in the NFL where COVID has affected many teams and games. And as we approach the trade deadline, teams look to improve their roster. 
Now moving to Troy's picks, after, well, after heading the last league, I was 5-4, and four, and I went 3-0, and oh, moving us to 8-4. and four. The 49ers were our first win of the week when they knocked off the Rams 24-16 and are making a neck and neck race in the NFC West. Monday night we had two games. First off, we had the Cardinals taking on the Cowboys without Dak. The Cowboys did not look so hot as they dropped that one to the Cardinals. The second game was the Chiefs and the Bills. The Chiefs won the game and once again showed in the world why they are the defending Super Bowl champions. Now moving along to this week's key pit matchups. Tonight we will see the Eagles and the Giants take place in a game that might be close, but it might not be too good. I take the Eagles in this one as local or North Dakota native Carson Wentz is going to center that Eagles offense. Sunday night we see Tampa Bay take on Las Vegas. No, we said Las Vegas is better, but I am sorry. I think Tampa Bay will win this as they've been gaining speed as the season's developed. And in Monday night prime time we see Dub Bears take on the Chargers. I think Nick Foles, that quarterback, I think he'll help lead the Bears to a win. And this has been Troy's picks. Now the World Series is underway and tied at 1-1 last night after Tampa Bay won against the Dodgers. The LA's Dodgers looked good in the first one, not as good last night. Game three is tomorrow night, 7.08 with the first pitch. I'm sure Chad, who does our graphics, is pulling for his Dodgers. However, I, on the other hand, am pulling for Tampa Bay. I think it'd be cool if all three Tampa Bay teams could win the NHL Stanley Cup, the Super Bowl, and the World Series. Now, moving along to high school football in the, in the world of Minot. Minot High won their last game last night, as they will not be making the playoffs. Cole's a little upset about that, I bet but hopefully they can bounce back next year. However, for the Bishop Ryan Lions who are across the street from us, they are preparing for a playoff game Saturday as they take on Kildare. Now moving ahead to Minot State Athletics news. There is some, uh, there's some uh, action this week on campus and at the Peps Rink. Saturday at 1 p.m., the Beaver will play an inner squad game between the All Blacks and the Red Rising. Go Red Rising. Later Saturday, the Beavers hockey team takes, the home, takes on, uh, I don't know who they're playing, I'm sorry. Their home opener. And Sunday, the women's will play at 2 p.m. in an inner squad game. For KMC Sports, I'm Troy Cowell. I'm going to get Cole's name right this time. Stay classy, my not. Cole, Philip. You know, you, you mentioned the Go Red Rising. I'm, I'm going to have to disagree. I am part of the All Black team. I was a captain of the All Black team. And, you know, I'm just, come, come support the Black team. Don't worry about the Red team. Yeah, lots of uh, competition between our football boys here. And, uh, yeah, like you said, Troy, I am an alumni of Minot High, so unfortunate that I don't get to see them in uh, postseason play this year. But uh, uh, they did a good job getting a win for the seniors um, last night. And, uh, Phil, uh, we had a good show today. What yeah, you, you know, it was an awesome show. It was cool to get some insight on MSU hockey as they prepare for their season this year. It's cool to see some behind the scenes for – uh, what Greg's doing as well as Noe's interview with wrestling getting back on the mat with that being said We we want to thank everyone for tuning in We want to thank our sponsors for making this show happen as well as all the behind the scenes uh, We hope to see you next week. Have a great rest of your week. Good night, Minot